Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, <clears throat> DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, the reports are conflicting. It's unclear as I make this video on February the 10th, 2014, whether Floyd Mayweather is going to fight Marcus Maidana or Amir Khan. According to the rumors, which might be true, might not be true, Amir Khan is actually winning the vote. Now let me preface what I'm going to say in this video with a few comments. I believe Floyd Mayweather is a great fighter. I believe he is the best of his generation. I'm a fan of the sport, and as I look at some of the other contemporaries, I view Floyd Mayweather as far more advanced than fighters like Saul Alvarez, who we just beat, Manny Pacquiao, many others, right? Understand that Mayweather has great defense. Mayweather also offensively has great offense. He goes to the body in a way people like Muhammad Ali never did. If you're facing Floyd Mayweather and he, you know, has his hands like this and he's looking at you, understand that he can lead with either hand, which I don't believe many fighters can. More importantly, when he throws his left, Mayweather has a great left jab when he wants to throw it. He has a great left hook when he wants to throw that. Understand, with his left hook, you cannot tell whether the left hook is going to be thrown up top or whether it's going to be thrown to the body. If you want to see a good exhibition of Mayweather killing a guy with left hooks, look at Mayweather against Diego Corrales, who at the time was unbeaten and highly regarded. Right? Mayweather literally deconstructs Corrales with a left hook. Another Mayweather classic left hook was Mayweather against Ricky Hatton. Understand, like Ali, Mayweather can lean on the ropes and still have his full offensive arsenal. Unlike Ali, Mayweather can stand his ground in the middle of the ring and take you out with body shots. Right? This is an elite fighter who beats you not only with his physical superiority, Understand Mayweather is faster than most of the people in boxing in terms of not just hand speed, but also foot speed, right? He can beat you with not only physical superiority, but technically he is the top shelf. He is the top of the game. Victor Ortiz got so tired of being unable to hit Floyd Mayweather that he headbutted Mayweather intentionally. Now the reason why that footage is classic is understand Floyd Mayweather at the time is leaning up on the ropes. He's on the side of the ropes against an offensively gifted fighter. And at the time of the headbutt, Mayweather had won every round in that fight. Right? Mayweather was literally dominating an offensive juggernaut while leaning up on the ropes. That Ortiz footage, in my opinion, is as impressive as Ali laying up on the ropes against George Foreman, right? Not many fighters can do things like that. Now, that said, I also believe that styles make fights. You can be a great fighter and still lose to someone who, for whatever reason, has the key to your lock. 
right? So, what I want to do right now is to tell you about a fight that I feel is relevant to a possible matchup between Amir Khan and Floyd Mayweather, right? The fight is up on YouTube. I advise everyone to track down this fight because, quite frankly, this fight is the best case for Amir Khan. And it's Floyd Mayweather against Zab Judah. Now, what I want people to realize is that Zab Judah, especially at the time of the Mayweather fight, had and still has some of the fastest hands in boxing. We talk about hand speed. This was a guy with tremendous hand speed so much hand speed that on the film he's noticeably faster than Floyd Mayweather he's noticeably faster than Mayweather also in my opinion and I understand this is going to be controversial Zab Judah is a better chess player than a Manny Pacquiao in other words, Judah can come in, hit you not just with hand speed, but he's actually interactive. In other words, he's making adjustments based on what you're doing. Right? So he's not just a long left hand. He's actually a guy who can operate at high speed. Right? Now, Zab Judah, ironically, has the same problem Amir Khan has. When he's on his game, he is simply spectacular. You look at him and you say, my goodness, this guy's a great fighter, right? For a corresponding tape, look at the early part of Amir Khan's fight against Marcus Maidana. As you watch the two guys, you're looking at Khan and you're thinking, wow, right? It's all there. The problem with both Judah and Khan is when they're not on their games, fighters who quite frankly don't have their gifts are not just hanging in the fight. They're beating them. Amir Khan, in my opinion, is a more gifted fighter than Lamont Peterson. That fight, whoever you thought won the fight, I understand it was close and controversial, but that fight shouldn't have been that close, right? Zad Judah, I'm sure, looks in the mirror today and wonders how he ever lost to Carlos Baldemir. You know, a guy who didn't have his hand speed, didn't have his power, understands Zad Judah hits hard. Didn't have Zab's gifts, but yet was in there roughing up Zab Judah. Well, let's get back to Zab Judah against Floyd Mayweather. As you watch that fight, you're going to see an astonishing start to the fight. Zab Judah beats Floyd Mayweather for at least the first three rounds. The fight looks like it's going to be lopsided. Mayweather can't make the adjustments. He cannot keep up with Judah's speed. At one point, Judah hits Mayweather. <coughs> Mayweather was so dazed and confused by the punch momentarily that his glove hits the canvas. Right, folks, legally, that's a knockdown. Right, Mayweather at the end of three rounds on my scorecard is down three rounds. Right, he cannot master the hand speed gap, which is noticeable. Right, Mayweather, understand, is a safe cracker. He's a counter puncher. His way of beating you is cerebral. He makes adjustments as the fight goes along, right? For worthy challengers of Floyd Mayweather, there's a period early in fights 
maybe the first, second rounds, where the challenger will look good until Mayweather makes the adjustment. By the way, let me point out he's not alone with this. People like Bernard Hopkins, same type thing. You look at their fights, they're typically down early. Then Mayweather slowly turns the table. Now you'll know Mayweather is going to win a fight by a wide margin if early in the fight Mayweather wins the early rounds like the Canelo fight. If Mayweather comes out and has already cracked your code early that fight's over. <coughs> so what a challenger <coughs> has to do is what Zab Judah did. Come out Show some wrinkle, right? Have the hand speed such and have the angles. And you'll notice Judah's a southpaw. So he's off at an angle where Mayweather can't counter him. Have the angles be such that Mayweather is befuddled for at least three rounds. Now, of course, Zab Judah fell apart later in the fight just like Amir Khan fell apart later in his fight against Marcus Maidana. But understand that just like you had the hand speed gap in the Judah fight, you had the hand speed gap in the Amir Khan fight. To figure out their relative hand speeds, look at the tape of Amir Khan against Zab Judah. You're going to see Khan is at least as fast hand speed wise as Zab Judah. The big mistake Zab Judah made, and it's structural with him, is that Zab Judah stayed in the pocket too long against Floyd Mayweather. Right? This is the same mistake that George Groves made against Carl Froch. Same type thing. Right? Groves comes out, looks good early in the fight, has the hand speed advantage is landing power shots, knocks down Carl Frotch. Even a blind judge at that point would have to realize that George Groves is the one off to the fast start. And then, curiously, just like Judah against Floyd Mayweather, George Groves lingered in front of Carl Frotch. Right? Judah lingered in front of Floyd Mayweather. Folks, if you're fighting Mayweather or Frotch, that's the wrong place to be. What Judas should have done is he should have, after that quick start, he should have stayed out of the pocket. He should have then circled. Keep in mind, you're the fighter with the lead. You're the fighter that has the crowd buzzing, right? You're the underdog who now suddenly people in the stands realize has a shot to win the fight. So at that point, you can't throw fastballs all the time. You have to take your foot off the gas. If Amir Khan can start fast, and I suspect he will, because he has a hand speed advantage that no recent Mayweather opponent, none since Zab Judah has had, right? And he has a nice, crisp jab. Understand, in terms of skill set, in my opinion, Amir Khan's a harder matchup for Floyd Mayweather than is Manny Pacquiao, right? Khan starts so fast that he overwhelmed Zab Judah, right? Khan's hand speed is such that it's like facing 100 mile an hour fastballs in the first inning. You're not quite ready. You don't quite know the angles. And here's a guy with accuracy coming in with a two-handed attack that keys off the jab. 
let's go back and revise, really correct revisionist history. Amir Khan lost to Danny Garcia. No question about it. Right? He hit the canvas in that fight. Fair enough. Right? He's talking to the referee. The ref thought he was dazed and confused. Right? Certainly to the fight fan watching the fight, Khan wasn't 100%. I'll concede all of those points. But as I like to say, knockouts cause amnesia. What I want you to do is to look at the first two rounds of that fight. Amir Khan's on his front foot. Amir Khan is dominating that fight. He gets caught after that. Let's not forget the road <coughs> leading up to the knockout. Right? Amir Khan is a fast starter. He's a fast starter with a hand speed advantage on Floyd Mayweather. And he has a decided foot speed advantage on Zab Judah. Look at their fight. You have that film. In my opinion, if you couple the films, Floyd against Zab Judah, I know it's an older film, but as you age, in my opinion, these hand speed gaps become more pronounced. Mayweather is about to be 37 years old. Amir Khan is a young lion. Dare I say, this Floyd Mayweather, in my opinion, can't match the hand speed of the younger Floyd Mayweather who fought Zab Judah. So there's going to be a hand speed gap. There's going to be a volume gap. Amir Khan comes out behind a crisp jab. He's throwing both hands. He can dip, go to the body. That's how we knocked down Marcus Maidana. He's moving around the ring. His fight style, when he's on his game, is judge friendly. He looks good in his game. This isn't a subtle game. This isn't a James Tony game where you have to kind of lean forward and look at the fighters to realize that James Tony is the one landing the crisp counters. No, this is a different dynamic. This is kind of like an Ali dynamic where a guy comes out with such blinding hand speed, movement, swagger, whatever you want to call it, that early. In a con fight, you're looking at the film and you say, hmm, this is the guy. So if Amir Khan can start fast, and if Amir Khan can stay out of the pocket, in other words, contrary to what Zab Judah did or George Groves did, if Amir Khan can start fast and then not be lingering in front of a master chess player, Right? And that's who, let's face it, Floyd Mayweather is. Right? If Khan rather can stay away from the chessboard, dart over, make his move, and then leave. Dart back over, make his move, and then leave. If he can stay out of the pocket while continuing to throw volume and while mixing it in with showboat type moves, think Ray Leonard, waving to the crowd, right, popping a jab and pausing for effect, Roy Jones type moves, to convince the judges, because that's who you're really trying to convince, to convince the judges that he's in control of the fight as he operates from distance after building an early lead then Floyd Mayweather is going to be in all kinds of trouble, right? I believe this fight is too close to call, right? I think if these guys were to fight a hundred of history's greatest fighters, I believe Floyd Mayweather would do a lot better than Amir Khan, simply because Mayweather's defense is A+. 
right? Mayweather has upper body movement, can move his head, has better timing than Amir Khan. Mayweather keeps a level head, doesn't get caught up in shootouts like Amir Khan did against Danny Garcia, right? I think against 100 neutral fighters, Floyd Mayweather does better. But this is one fight with a particular style matchup, right? And I think Mayweather is going to have a problem with a hand speed gap. Mayweather is going to have a problem too, and don't underestimate this, with a charisma gap, right? Khan just looks more dramatic in the ring. Whether he's doing more or not, Khan has a certain level of charisma that's going to give him some slow rounds, right? If Mayweather fights Khan, I'll be on the sidelines on that fight. I'm guessing Khan's going to be a big underdog. I might even take Khan hedged with the over in the fight. Right, so if Khan gets lucky and gets an early knockdown, and keep in mind, if you come out and the other fighter doesn't know the angles, and you're able to hide your hands and land some flush shots, things can happen. Mayweather got knocked down by Zab Judah. Right? I understand Amir Khan might have a chin problem. He was down against Breedus Prescott. He was out against Breedus Prescott. Right? Mayweather could get on his front foot when Mayweather has an opportunity to land clean punches. He can destroy an opponent. Diego Corrales hits the canvas at least five times in their fight. Right? By the way, the way that fight ended was Corrales' father threw in the towel. That's how bad the punishment was. For those of you who don't think Mayweather can punch, look at the Arturo Gotti fight. Right? That was a destruction. But I believe that Khan has enough foot speed to make it into the later rounds. Right? So I think this fight's too close to call just for betting purposes right now on February the 10th Based on what I perceive the odds to be, one possible play to consider would be Khan to win the fight. Because you're going to get certainly at least two, three, four to one odds. Hedge with the over in the fight. Keep in mind, American did go the distance with Marcus Maidana. Anyway, let me hear from you if there are other fights you think we should all consider, let us know. Put a different way. Had American had the first two rounds that he had against Danny Garcia and then backed away, not stayed in the pocket against a mid-range hooker, but actually moved around the ring. There's an art to it, right? You move around the ring, you know it's a three-minute round, you throw flurries at strategic times, early part of the round, late part of the round, you have a certain body language that shows the judges that you're in control. Well, if you can take the early rounds and split the rest, you're in the ballpark at the end of the fight on the scorecards. Had American done that against Danny Garcia, I think he would have beaten Danny Garcia. Right? Had American moved around the ring more against Lamont Peterson, I believe he would have beaten Lamont Peterson. He's had some bad moments in fights. The Julio Diaz fight, the last fight, he had some bad moments there too. Let's just say, if he comes in with his A game, if he comes in ready for the biggest fight of his life, if he comes in ready, if he starts like he did against Zab Judah, let's just say that Mayweather hasn't had to deal with this level of hand speed, this level of volume, this level of movement in quite some time. Let me hear from you.
Thanks for stopping by.